Hi there, I'm Jen. This is Remembered Reads, and this is going to be an overview of selling books online using a few different resources. This is something I had wondered about originally when I first moved to the US because I had heard that it was fairly easy to do, and I figured some other people might be wondering the same things that I was originally wondering. And since I'm about to move, I'm trying to clear things out, so I thought this was a perfect time to record something like this. The first thing that we're going to look at is BookScouter. BookScouter aggregates all of the different sales sites, places like Amazon, Powell's, textbooks.com, sell sellbackyourbooks.com, various sites like that. It has dozens of them in the system. You take the ISBN number from any book that you have, you enter it in, and it will give you a list of the sales or buyback sites and let you know which ones have the best prices, which ones aren't buying that title at all, so on and so forth. Amusingly, in the two days between when I originally recorded this and when I went to sell these books, Powell's was no longer buying this title anymore, which was funny. So here we are two days later, and I am on the Powell's site, entering the same ISBN numbers, but this time only of the books that Book Scouter had told me were being bought back by Powell's for higher prices than any of the other sites. The books that I'm getting rid of right now are mostly just because I want to clear out space. For example, this one, The Thousand Names by Django Wexler, every library has that. It's super popular. There is no reason that I need to keep owning a book like that, uh, just because it's so easy to find elsewhere. And that's the case for most of the books that I'm selling. Uh, not so much this one, Union Jack. That's hard to find, actually. It took me a while to buy it the first time. But it wasn't actually that entertaining, which I should have known because it was written by Ben Robb, who wrote the end of the original Excalibur, which I didn't enjoy. So I don't actually know why I bought that, except for being a bit of a completionist at one point. And this is Bombshells, which is available through Hoopla, so I can read that online through the library anytime I want. There's not really a need for me to hang on to the physical copy. As much as I like the aesthetics of it, if I really wanted to keep that in my life, I could just buy a statue or a poster for that one. Now, oh, next up is Alias. I wasn't super interested in this when it originally came up. This is what Jessica Jones is based on. I picked this up at the West Edmonton Mall because it was on a really good deal and I was on a work trip. And you know when you're on an all-expense-paid work trip, sometimes you end up spending money on things you wouldn't have otherwise. And that's what, the only reason I own that book. And here we have another volume of Bombshells, which, again, available on Hoopla, so I don't really need to own it. I really shouldn't have bought the first four volumes of that. I did enjoy the first one, but not enough to warrant having purchased them all, especially when they're all available through the library. So I kind of regret having bought them, even though I do think they're reasonably entertaining. They're just not something I need to keep. Next up, we have one of Marvel Comics, Gunslinger, Dark Tower, prequels. This, you can see, still has the wrap on it. I have never read that. I was interested in the original novels a number of years ago. I don't think I've touched one of them in about 15 years, so I don't really know why I bought the comics, but might as well get rid of it. This, again, it's another mass market genre piece, which, again, really easy to get out of the library, so I don't need to hang on to all of these. And similarly, this time I think we have some nonfiction, The Guns of August. Great book, but easily accessible at libraries if I ever want to reread it. So not something I need to hang on to. And up next is yet another piece of genre fiction, which once again, very popular and easily accessible at libraries. Weirdly, I think I took the first and third book in that series out of the library, so I don't really know why I bought the second one, but hey. Next up, we have the example that I used on BookScatter, which hilariously is no longer being bought by Pals, even though I'm entering this in here, so I might as well just cut this part out. And one more time, we're going to have some more science fiction which, once again, easy to get at the library. I think my current library has that on two separate apps and in both ebook and audiobook format, so I definitely don't need to hang on to that one. And since that was the last of the books in the Powell's pile, 
We're going to move forward and it will give me the prices for each of them. Powell's has a pretty dramatic difference between the amount that you get for credit versus for cash. So I always go with credit for them, although you can get cash in return. It's just a much lower amount. And that sounds counterintuitive since I'm trying to clear out, but they do charge a fair bit for their secondhand books and it is more than you get for the books. So you can buy back about a third of the number of books that you actually sell. So it's not that bad in the end. Then you box them up, print up the shipping label and you're good to go. Next, we're going to be looking at bookstores.com. This one I actually haven't used before. So this is going to be a first time experience for me. So I don't know how successful it's going to be, but the prices that they offered were fairly reasonable compared to most of the others. So I figured it was worth giving a go. The first book going in this box is Berlin City of Stones, which is a gorgeous book. It's a black and white historical graphic novel, really lovely, but it's one that I bought back when it was first published in I think 2001, and I have not reread it since then. So there's not a lot of point to me hanging on to it. And here we have the first volume of Saga, which again is something that is so popular that it's available everywhere, including on Hoopla. So I don't have a huge reason to hang on to it. And there's another volume of Bombshell. So that's the same story with that one. And next we have all three volumes of March, which is a beautiful graphic memoir of John Lewis's memories of the civil rights movement. And I very much enjoyed it, but I think it's so easy to find in libraries that I don't think there's a huge benefit to me hanging on to it for myself. And next we have The Natural Way to Draw, which was a textbook for an art class that I took years and years ago. And I think it's time to let that one go because I haven't opened it since then. And then we have Glimpses, which is a sh series of short stories by Lynn Flewelling. They tie into her Night Runner universe but it's been so long since I read any of those actual novels that I thought it's time to get rid of the short stories because I don't think I'm going to read them. And finally, Paul Cornell's Lost Child of Litchford, which I quite enjoyed, but don't need to hang on to. I think I sold the first book in that series as well. So that's the end of part one of this project. I have another stack of books that I'm going to sell through sellbackyourbook.com, so I might record that as well. And I'll do an update when all of these have gone through. I've used Pals in the past, so that I know that usually takes around three weeks before you get the confirmation and all of that. But it'll be interesting to see how this bookstores.com goes. Let me know if you thought this was interesting or just boring either way. And I'll make some changes to how I do the updates to this. Other than that, I hope you have a great weekend. And that's it for now. Ciao.